Hello, Believe Nation. I started the Mentor Me series with the goal to try to hang around people who've had a lot more success than us, and hopefully by spending a little more time with them, some of their mindset, their belief systems, their way of thinking seeps into us to help us become the best version of ourselves. So today we're gonna to learn some of the very best advice from some of the Forbes billionaires. So every year Forbes make a list of the richest people in the world, many of them are entrepreneurs, and I thought it'd be a fun idea to take some of the very best advice from the list of the wealthiest, most successful Forbes billionaires to help us get stronger. And as always, as you're watching the video, if you hear something that really resonates with you, please leave it down in the comments below and put quotes around it as well so other people can be inspired too. Enjoy. When I started Microsoft, I didn't think of it as all that risky. I mean, I was so excited about what we were doing. It's true I could have gone bankrupt, uh, but you know, I had a set of skills that were highly employable, and in fact, my parents were still willing to let me go back to Harvard and finish my education if I wanted to. You've always got a job with me, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the only the thing that was scary to me wasn't quitting and starting the company. It was when I started hiring my friends, and they expected to be paid. Uh, and, and then we had customers who went bankrupt, customers that I'd counted on to come through. And so then I got this incredibly conservative approach that I wanted to have enough money in the bank to pay a year's worth of payroll, uh, even if we didn't get any, any payments coming in. And you know, I'm almost uh, <laughs> true to that the whole time. We have about 10 billion now, which is, is pretty much enough yeah. for the next year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. You know, I, if you're going to start a company, it takes so much energy that you know you it better overcome your your feeling of risk. I don't think that you necessarily, if you're going to start a company, should do it at the start of your career. I think there's a lot to be said for working for a company, learning how they do things. You know, if you're young, it's hard to go lease premises. They they made that hard for me. You couldn't rent a car. Uh, when you were uh, uh, under 25 at the time, so I was always taking taxis to go see customers. Uh, and uh, the people would, you know, people would say, well, we're going to go have a discussion in the bar. Well, I couldn't go to the bar. Uh, and, but, you know, that's fun because I'll tell you, when people are first skeptical and they go, this kid doesn't know anything, then when you show them you've really got a good product and you know something, they actually tend to go overboard and they think, whoa, you know, they know a lot. Uh, let's really do an incredible amount with these people. So our youth, at least in this country, uh, was a, a huge asset for us once we reached a, a certain threshold. It is hard, it's hard to hire old, older people um, because they'll be a little bit conservative about whether they should come and, and take the risk. And, it took three or four years before we could go out into the normal sort of employment pool. But those, those problems that come with starting a firm, you better think of those as, as part of the, the pleasure, part of the, the, the challenge that, that is part of the, the excitement. I was just wondering, what, is, what would you consider to be the worst investment you've ever made? The worst investment I ever made? <laughs> How long do you have? <laughs> Oh, I, I've, I've made some very bad ones, but that doesn't really bother me. I, I, you know, it uh, may bother the shareholders, but that's another question. <laughs> the, uh, you know, you're going to make you're going to make mistakes in life. I mean, it, there's no question about it. You don't want to make them on the big decisions. You know, who you marry and so, some things like that. So there's no way I'm going to make a lot of business and investment decisions without making some mistakes. I may try to minimize them. I, I don't I don't dwell on them at all. I don't I don't look back. Uh, the biggest mistakes are the ones that actually don't show up. They're the mistakes of omission rather than commission. We've never lost that much money on any one investment. Uh, uh, but it's the things that I knew enough to do that I didn't do. We have, we have missed profits of as much as, you know, maybe $10 billion in things that I knew enough to do and I didn't do. Now, the fact I didn't buy Microsoft way back uh, is not a foregone opportunity because I didn't know enough to make that decision. But there have been other investments where I didn't know enough to make the decision, and for one reason or another, I either 
didn't do it at all or I did it on a small scale. I was sucking my thumb when I should have been writing checks, you know, basically. And, <laughs> and, and you know, those don't show up. You know, there's no place where it, it shows missed opportunities, but I've, I've missed some big ones. The triumphs in life are, are partly triumphs because you know that everything isn't going to be a triumph. And, and, and uh, I, I would never get too hung up on mistakes. I know a lot of people that really agonize over them, and, and it, it, it just isn't worth it. I mean, tomorrow's another day, and you live it forward and just go on to the next thing. We know from our past experiences that big things start small. Uh, you know, it, uh, the biggest oak starts from an acorn, and you've got to recognize, if you want to do anything new, you've got to be willing to let that acorn grow into a little sapling and then finally into a small tree, and maybe one day it'll be a big business on its own. And in fact, that's one of the um, mottos for one of your initiatives, and forgive my, my pronunciation of the Latin, but Greta Team Ferocite, what does that mean to you? Well, it, it means step-by-step uh, -step ferociously. And it's the motto for Blue Origin. Um, and uh, uh, basically, you can't skip steps. You have to put one foot in front of the other. Things take time. Uh, you, there are no shortcuts. And, uh, but, uh, but you want to do those steps with you know, passion and ferocity. The, the main thing is just when you're starting something, it's, um, it's just kind of hard. You need to be pretty headstrong about it. Right? And there are going to be all these challenges that come up. And I think the main thing that you need to do is just not give up, right? And, um, and kind of know what you want to do. And, you know, the, the best entrepreneurs that who I've met don't really start companies because their goal is to build a company. They do it because they want to make a change in the world and help people. And I think if you, if you kind of stay true to that and, um, and if you just focus on kind of powering through no matter what the, the challenges are that will inevitably come up in your path, then... Um, You'll find that there are lots of tools that are available and a lot of people who will help you build what you're building. Think things out for yourself. Come to your own judgments. Don't simply conform uh, to conventional ways of thinking, conventional ways of dressing, conventional ways of acting. That a lot of this, uh, a lot of things are, are based on fashion. Even morality at times is based on fashion. It was once, fa you know, slavery was once not considered not to be immoral. Uh, you know, people are you know people are shocked that the uh, the ancient Greeks had slaves that, that that we had slavery in this country as recently as you know 130 140 years ago. So there are more moral facts. You have to really go back to first principles and think things out for yourself, whether they're scientific principles or moral principles or business ideas or product ideas. You have to think things out for yourself. I believe that uh, family and uh, personal life and business of, of, of professional life is not only compatible, it's necessary. You will have a better professional life with a good personal life and family life that uh, if you don't have a good personal life and a family life. I think, uh, I, I don't understand the contrary. Uh, and it's very clear that uh, that uh, the good uh, personal life make you f stronger. Uh, you are stronger for the challenges. You are uh, working. Uh, I think I don't believe in working 20 hours or 16 hours or 14 hours. When you work too much, is because your job is is uh, beyond you. You are not controlling the, the you, you are not doing w good your job. If you need to be 15 hours, 16 hours, it's because you are not organized. Then you don't have delegation of your responsibility. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that uh, in any business, in any activity, you need to work 15 or 16 hours and you don't have time for yourself or for your family or for anyone. When I uh, in the, graduated from universities, and before I, you know, for three years I tried to fill in the universities. So I applied jobs for 30 times, got rejected. I went for a police, they said, no, you're not good. I went to even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, <laughs> you 20, 24 people went for the job. Yeah. 23 people accepted. I was the only one guy. <laughs> And we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I received it. So to me, being turned down, rejected, 
oh, by the way, I told you that I, would, I applied for Harvard yeah. for 10 times, rejected. <laughs> I know it'll be rejected, I just don't now. want to say that. <laughs> yeah, sorry now. Right. <laughs> 10 times you wrote them and said, I'd like to come to Harvard. Yeah, <clears throat> and then I told myself, someday I should go teach there, baby. <laughs> Now, if you want to make it quick buck, you can do it a lot of different ways. Uh, you can cheat somebody, you can uh, misrepresent something, you can uh, go manipulate the political system to get an advantage. But if you, want to, if you want to be successful over a long period of time, I believe you need to be, to focus first of all on creating value for others. And that's, an, oh, that's, I've had people, well, that's naive, that's uh, utopian. No, it isn't, because why will the customers want to pay you anything over a long period unless you're creating value for them? Why would your, your employees want to work for you? Or if they did, they didn't have any alternative, why do they want to give their best efforts? Why do they want to get excited? Why would they wake up at night with ideas? If you're in a community, a plant in a community, unless you're creating value for that community, why would the community want you there? If you're polluting and hurting people and not contributing anything to the community. So long-term success starts with being dedicated to creating value for others. It's, it's not altruism, it's uh, uh, my whole philosophy is, is to have a system of mutual benefit where both parties gain, a, a society based on win-win. The only thing that you can control that influences success in life is how hard you work, how honest you are, and how well you deal with others. You can control those variables. Those variables. You can't control how lucky you are, although the more you work, the luckier you get. You have no influence on the intellectual capabilities that God did or did not give you, but you can work as hard as possible. You can be scrupulously honest so that people respect you, and you can get along with others because nobody does anything by themselves. Did you have to pay a price, though, you personally? Well, I think that everything is an either or. You, there is a price in everything. You can study uh, or you can go out and play. You can defer to others or you can try to hog the credit. Uh, you can uh, be honest and suffer the consequences or you can lie, cheat, and steal and short term, maybe even advance. But long term, you are better off if you work harder, you are better off if you're honest, and you are better off if you give others credit and get them to help you with, by helping them. What do you tell others who try to strike that balance between family and work and volunteer well, efforts you and have anything to, else? The answer of either or is invariably yes. You can't go all in one direction. You cannot uh, uh, walk away from your family for your career. On the other hand, if you walk away for your career, from your career for your family, you're not going to have the money to support the family. And parents all the time are making those kinds of choices between career and family. They do some of both, and you try to blend the two, and that may not be the perfect answer, but that's a practical answer that uh, I've always told young people when they go off to college. You have to study and you have to get good grades, but you certainly should have a good time as well because that's part of your growing up experience and there's no point in leading life to suffer all the time. You want to enjoy life as well as the next person. Uh, so it's some balance, some blend between the two. I want to talk about dreams for a second. And in my case, literally a dream. When I was in college, I was sure that I'd been admitted by a clerical error, probably a computer error. And because of that, I had an irrational fear I'd be sent home on the bus. And Sergei here knows this is true. But it turns out, because of that anxiety, I woke up literally with a dream. And it was kind of a strange dream. It went like, I think I could download the entire web onto some old computers that were lying around. And that would probably seem pretty crazy to most people, but I stayed up a couple hours in the middle of the night doing some math, and it seemed actually pretty plausible. 
Well, assuming you actually didn't keep any of the web pages, you only kept the links. And then, sort of figured out, given all that data, I thought it would take a couple of weeks. And I told my advisor that. And he just sort of laughed at me. And of course, it took him a year or two. But at the end of that, we had a way to rank web pages. And no thoughts to search at all. And eventually, search entered the picture. And you know the rest. And that became Google. So I'd like to encourage everyone to follow their dreams. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'd love to know what did you think of this video? Did you enjoy? Did you learn from it? What was your favorite clip? And what was the biggest message that you took from this video? What are you going to immediately apply to your life or to your business? Leave it down in the comments below and I'm gonna join in the discussion. Finally, I also wanna give a quick shout out to Christoph. Thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and posting that fun picture on Instagram that included the little tiny Timo on the side. I really, really, really appreciate your support. So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever Your One Word is. Much love, I'll see you soon. And one, and one does have to be focused on the short term and money coming in when creating a company because otherwise the company will, will die. So the, the, I think that a lot of times people think like creating a company is going to be fun. I would say it's, not, it's really not that fun. I mean, there are periods of fun and there are, there are periods of where, it's, where it's just awful. Um, and particularly if you're the CEO of the company, um, you actually have a distillation of all the worst problems in the company. Um, there's no point in spending your time on things that are going right. So you only spend on things on your time on things that are going wrong. And, and there are things that are going wrong that other people can't, can't take care of. So you have like the worst, you have a filter for the crappest problem in the company. <laughs> the most pernicious and painful problem. Um, so I wouldn't say it's, it's it, I think you have to feel quite compelled to do it. Um, and have a, a fairly high pain threshold. And there's a friend of mine who, who says like starting a company is like staring into the abyss and, and eating glass. Um, and there's some truth to that. <laughs> um, the staring into the abyss part is that you're going to be constantly facing the, the um, extermination of the company. Because uh, most, most startups fail. Uh, it's like 90%, arguably 99% of, of startups fail. So, uh, so you, you, that, that's the staring into the abyss part. You're constantly saying, okay, this if, if, if I don't get this right, the company will die. Um, it's going to be quite stressful. Quite stressful. And, and then um, the eating glass part is you've got, you've, got to do, you've got to do the problems. You've got, to, you've got to work on the problems that the company needs you to work on, not the problems you want to work on. And, and so that, the, that's, you end up working on problems that, that uh, you'd really wish you weren't working on. And so that's, that's the eating glass part. Um, and that goes on for a long time. So how do you keep your focus on the big picture when you're constantly faced with, we could be out of business in a month? Well, it's, it's just a very small percentage of mental energy is on the, on the big picture. Like, you know, you know, you know where you, you're generally head, heading for, and, and the, the actual path is going to be some sort of zigzaggy thing in that direction. Um, and try not to deviate too far from the path that, that, that you want to be on, but you're going to have to do that to some degree. Um, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to diminish the. I mean, I think the prod, the profit motive is a is a is a good one if the rules of an industry are properly set up. So there's nothing fundamentally wrong with profit. In fact, profit just means that uh, people are paying you more for the, the, whatever you're doing than you're spending to create it. That's a good thing. <laughs> and, and if if you're not if, if that's not the case then you'll be out of business, and rightfully so. Because you're, you're, you're not adding enough value. There's a Latin expression, which I think is great. I love it. It was in a now very old movie called The Dead Poets Society. But the line of the movie was, Carpe diem, seize the day. The opportunities are there, but you've got to reach out and pick them up. You've got to grab at them. Some of you may have already done that at the U in your classes, in other students that you met, 
in your extracurricular activities, but grab them. Don't be afraid to make a mistake because you know what you can do if you grab the wrong one? Drop it and pick up another one. It's okay. Seize the day. I think back of all of the, 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 the luck, but also the times that were in front of me to seize the day. I don't know what got me to drop out of business school and come to Microsoft. My parents thought I was a whack job. Neither one of them graduated college and they thought this was really a wild idea. I was lucky, I seized the day. Microsoft, one day some guys fly in from, from IBM and all of a sudden we figure out we could actually provide all the software they need for this thing that became the personal computer. People, Bill, Paul, they had the wisdom to seize the day when that opportunity presented itself. And yet, when you think of all the opportunities, when I think back of all the opportunities I've had, the one that was most important was an opportunity I got in 1969. Sitting in my junior high school class, I was in a public junior high, not very stimulated at the time, and over the loudspeaker, they said that a well, private high school in our area that I'd never heard of was giving scholarship tests that weekend. I told my mother I wanted to take them. She said, that's fine as long as you get a scholarship because we can't afford to send you there. But that's really where I got switched on. Switched on in math, switched on personally, energized in a way that never, never could be turned back. And I am very thankful for that opportunity. Yes, there's a lot of luck in opportunity, but there's a lot of seizing the day. And I encourage you all to reach out and carpe diem, really seize the opportunities that are in front of you. I've been working, I've been in business for 69 years, since I was 12. And every time, well, after the first dozen or so businesses, I realized that the only way to get ahead was to do things different differently than the way it was being done. And uh, uh, then I, I came to learn, which I finally learned at my ripe young age, that um, if you do things differently, success will follow you like your shadow. And you can't get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So people doubted me because people just didn't do what I, what I would do. It's a matter of take, finding out what it is that an industry does and identifying the opportunity to, as to how to do it differently and then being enough of a risk taker to actually do it differently. Mm -hmm. So people doubted me because nobody thought of doing it the way that I did and uh, nobody had the, they didn't have the, they were satisfied with the status quo and I'm never satisfied with the status quo. Okay.